everyone. Happy Wednesday to you. We are at the Comfort Inn in Connellsville, PA for a fresh new episode of Music Talks exclusively on the Armstrong Neighborhood channel. A special shout out to Rick Fike, the man behind the camera, and to Macaulay Jones of Mackey Music Studios taking care of all of our sound needs tonight. So our special guest artist is singer, songwriter, Mr. Steve Hawk. Hi Chelsea, how are you tonight? I'm good, how are you? Good, wonderful. So my first question, is Hawk actually your real last name? Yes, yes it is. Uh, I'd like to make something up, but no, it, Hawk is my real last name. It just fell into place. It was a perfect last name for, for the stage. Yeah, you know? it was meant to be. Uh, you know, uh, four letters, easy to say, one syllable, and it's it's a cool one. Yeah, it's it's really great. I'm actually, yeah. I'm kind of jealous. Yeah, yeah so, I lucked out. I have seen tons of your stuff on Facebook. I've seen you around at shows. I know you promote all of the local artists. You you really are wonderful in helping promote the local music scene. But I really don't know all that much about you personally. Excellent. So take me back to the very, very beginning and how your music career started. Uh, you want like infant beginning or? <laughs> uh, when did you first pick up a guitar? Yeah, okay, that's fair. It's actually a pretty cool story. Uh, my brother, uh, my mom used to take me all around to uh, choirs. I was in church choirs. I was in school choirs. Uh, she was in music. She went to Seton Hill, and she uh, ended up being a church organist in the area. But she was always very active in music. My grandfather, Hawk, uh, he was in a 50s uh, gospel quartet, and we have him on vinyl. And I listened to him all the time. Uh, my dad sh sang in the church choir. Uh, my brothers were always uh, singing. Uh, great music influences as far as their collections go. They were older than me by 10 and 6 years. So they went off to college before me and they'd bring back music. Um, the first thing I can remember influencing me was my oldest brother uh, for senior day did Freebird with a band that with a bunch of his buddies and they had it on video, you know, VHS. Mm. So uh, that was like 1988. He goes off to college, brings back new wave music, brings back alternative music. And since he's living that age, he knows all about what's happening in Seattle and the 90s. And uh, absolutely. Uh, and so even today when we get together and we, we BS about music, he gives me little tidbits and introduces me to a couple new bands that he didn't realize were out there. That was all influential uh, in the creative time for me because before I picked up a guitar, I was just formally singing in choirs and, mm -hmm. and I didn't like it as much. You know, I enjoyed singing, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until I actually noticed rock and roll uh, especially in the early 90s when it was just popping, that I realized that I wanted to be a part of it somehow. I don't know how. I didn't know anything was going to happen. Uh, my my other brother, he would he went to a college in Ohio, and he, I would only see him every once in a while. But he would have a guitar when he came back. He didn't play in high school either. He brought his guitar back, and he, I was laying in bed, uh, probably. Uh, towards the end of my school year and he was playing this haunting melody over and over again downstairs in our uh, living room and as I was trying to sleep I just kept laying there thinking man I love this tune I want to learn how to do this but he would kill me if I touched his guitar and he actually said I will kill you if, I, if you touch my guitar big but brothers yeah, are the best big, yeah absolutely the best absolutely. thanks Brandon and, and disclaimer we're we're all the best of friends now but uh, <laughs> but back then I was just little Stevie and they could beat on me whenever they want but to go back to it he went away and he had his guitar set up against the couch and I just what's the science behind this how does a person make a sound and I'll never forget just reaching up plucking a fret and just strumming the first time, I was like, that's incredible. I was 12, 13 at the time, so I didn't know what was in my future. But I picked up, and he noticed that I really liked it, so he taught me uh, uh, four non blondes. Wait, so he didn't kill you? He did not <gasps> kill me. Uh, he did not you, kill which, me. Wait, was it What's Up? Yep, yep, absolutely. I sing that one. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> uh, so do all the ladies. <laughs> we know this. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> but it's a good it's a good jam, and it was a three chord song, and it was easy for him to teach me. And so that summer and the following summer, that's all I played to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so they probably got sick of me doing it. Uh, but nonetheless, I later, I just kept my guitar playing to myself. Uh, other than some high school girlfriends or some close friends, uh, those were the only people that knew I played. I took guitar lessons because my mom, still being the formal person and wanting me to get things done right, she uh, introduced me to a friend of hers in Greensburg and I took lessons my 10th grade year. She bought me a new guitar, a Fender acoustic, and I was really serious about it. But it was one of those deals where it was the typical guitar teacher where you go in and you're like, hey man, you want to learn Dust in the Wind? And I was like, sure, I don't know. I, maybe, I like the song, but okay, it's a song. But then as he's teaching me chords and he's teaching me scales, that's where I learned scales. Uh, he taught me scales and actually how scales made sense in the whole spectrum of uh, the music. Uh, that's whenever I started to like just open up. I didn't write my first song though until about two years later. Uh, so that would be about your senior year of high school? My senior year of high school. Uh, I was dating somebody after school or after I graduated and you know. I was a hopeless romantic on the verge of an overkill. Oh. And so I, I wrote this song for this girl and it panned, you know, it, nothing panned out. She and I dated for a while. I went away actually to the same college where my brother who was playing guitar down in the basement, he and I ended up being in the same fraternity, same college, uh, out in Alliance, Ohio, Mount Union College. And uh, that's whenever everything blossomed. Yeah, so let's pause for one sec before we get into all the craziness of college. You were an art major? Yes, yes I was. Yes, I was. All right, so... I, my intention was to be an art teacher. My father, uh, he was a well-known teacher in Scottsdale. And uh, my mom went into it, my older brother, the one with the guitar. He was a teacher as well, and we all just kind of tried that aspect of our lives. And obviously, moving from Ohio to Pennsylvania and all of this kind of uh, messed with curriculum with me, and I just found other jobs, and I started playing music instead of being serious about that. And things just kind of okay. unrolled, unraveled, you know what I mean? Right, so while you were in college being an art major, you formed a band, correct? Well, yes, I did, but that wasn't until about my junior year when I actually had music to play. I went with this one song to college, and as being out there, being away from the friends that I had grown up with, being alone, the first week, the first day, the first night was horrible. I met a couple guys in the dorm and that sort of thing, but my, <clears throat> my tool to get to meet people, guys and girls, was the guitar. Yeah. And so I'd sit in my room and drive my roommate nuts. I'm pretty sure he hated me. We never really stayed close after college. So that's, that's a known fact, I'm sure. But I got to meet one guy and he was dating a girl at the time. And they're like, oh, you play guitar? Yes, I do. I've got a song, a song. I sat down and I played with them or played it for them. And they were just like, this is amazing. But it wasn't like, a, this is amazing, we're lying to you, this is amazing. And it was, it, it was something that I didn't realize that I had. I didn't realize, I was just writing a sappy love song for some girl that was never gonna be around once I left life. And you know, it just, after that, I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote. And I, I wrote countless songs my freshman year. Some I still play. And it just kept going from there. I, it was my hobby after that. I became a writer, a songwriter. And I was always somewhat creative with writing to begin with. But this was just an outlet that I was able to channel. And then when I joined a fraternity or, you know, started playing out to different venues and by myself, people started to notice. So you started out as a solo acoustic act. Yes. So when you started gigging in college, you were by yourself? Uh, to a degree, because I didn't have the confidence to gig yet. But I had the confidence to write songs. Okay. And so people would come along and they told me, you should do this, you should do that. And my, uh, due to growing up listening to bands in the 90s, I didn't feel like I could get anything out and I wouldn't be taken seriously unless I was in a band. So although I had music, I, d I remember one time playing in college, 
uh, at a fraternity party and I was in like the main room of the fraternity house and they had me hooked up to a sound system outside and I remember looking out in between songs and people were like pressed up against the window like who the is this guy you know and I was just like okay maybe this can be I'm a thing. I'm doing something <laughs> right it seems. Yeah maybe this could be a yeah. thing. So that was probably my sophomore year of college. And then junior year Bam. Uh, junior year was whenever things started to really pan out uh, because I met my drummer my sophomore year of college, but we were just practicing in his basement. My junior year of college, he actually, I was in, on, uh, in an on campus house. And this is so funny because we were in this crammed little room that was no larger than the stage area. And our microphone was strapped to a vacuum cleaner with duct tape because we didn't have any equipment and we were just college kids I was working at Taco Bell man you know I didn't have enough money for for equipment and I was probably spending it on horrible extracurriculars and so he was a party animal I loved the party and we loved the same kind of music our first song that we did together that we practiced together we did in his basement was uh, Ball and Chain and Story of My Life by Social Distortion uh, and that was my biggest influence going into college as far as all the music I loved the punk scene but I loved rock and roll, and I loved oldies. And, I, and that was a band that, with a couple particular albums, they kind of were able to mesh that together to a young listener's ears, and it made sense to me with the backing vocals, and it was a formula band with like two guitars, a bass, and drums. It was, it was just one of those things that, when I was young, I didn't realize that that was something that was gonna, I was going to pick up on, but I did. And so we formed our band, and uh, I'd say it's a little foggy and cloudy because uh, <clears throat> it, all of this happened at the same time. I made a solo album in like 2000, and it actually had a couple songs that I still play today. And it sold at least 150 copies on campus. I sold, and that, that was more beer money. And, you know, we were still using a vacuum cleaner with duct tape because I probably wasn't spending it on good, you know. I, I was just like, oh, these people like this music, but it gave me enough confidence to keep going. Uh, Troy uh, and I formed a band. We played at a, a campus coffee house with, a, with another aspiring musician. Um, and he played piano and had some of his own music. And he invited me to play, and the three of us had put on a show, and a lot of people came out, and that was step two, you know? So how many years did this, and what was the name of the band? The name of the band was Forgotten Nobody. So how many years was Forgotten Nobody together? Originally, <clears throat> again, that's foggy, but I can, I can say it was probably together maybe a year and a half, two okay. years at the most. Uh, and we played a place called Mangoes, which was a dance club. And people would come out, and we were kind of like the house band for a couple shows. And w I mainly played on the stairs of my fraternity house. I played on the outside stairs. I played on the inside stairs. When people were, you know, drunk or passing out at parties, I'd just hang out and play till 5 in the morning. So I know now you primarily do all of your original works, but back then whenever you started playing solo and with the band, was it mainly covers or did you have original works with them? Well, it, like, it, it's, it's all fluid uh, because I did have uh, my own music, but there I wasn't quite confident enough to get it out yet. And a lot of those songs that I play now, they were fairly new back then. And so they weren't polished yet. They weren't uh, to the degree where they are now. But I, being a fan of Social Distortion at the time, I played a lot of their, I would play their albums front to back because people okay. didn't know who they were back really? then. This is like uh, 1999. So the, a, lot of, a lot of that, they were big in certain circles, but if you were in an on-campus fraternity, you think they sat around and listened to punk or social distortion? A lot of the in older my, heads did. In my mind, they did. Oh, man, me too. <laughs> I wish. And I, and I, I guess it was just kind of like the ebbs and flows of how things change, but a lot of the younger kids coming up didn't know who they were, so I played a lot of their stuff because my voice meshed with Mike Ness okay. of Social D very right. well, and I also put on a good show making it sound like it too. Right. So a lot of people were like, is that your music? I was like, nah, no. Nah. To this day, if I do a cover song, I'll be like, yeah, I wrote that. Just just to, as a throwback to that yeah. and just kind of, uh, it's fun to say. Yeah. Lots of laughs. So let's fast forward to college is over. Mm -hmm. What happened next? Well, 
Um, Did you take a break, or were you? Yeah, gigging I, I was thinking by about life. Uh, I lived out in Ohio for a while. I started working with special needs kids, and college was gone. I was about an hour away from the campus, and I thought I would try to live and and you know grow up a little bit and try and fend for myself and pay bills. And I was in a relationship with a girl that was just going off to college at the time, and uh, I was madly in love, but it was just wrong timing and everything like that. I tried to take life seriously. I thought I was going to get a job that was going to lead me into teaching. And although I tried my best, it didn't. Things happened in the relationship. That kind of went sour. I wasn't paying my bills like I wanted to. And so I had friends and family back here that were uh, saying, hey, come on back, move home. And it seemed safe. But one of the coolest memories I have about living in Cleveland was I started to form some friendships with some people out there. And there was this place called Harry Buffaloes. And they had a house band. And my friends knew that I played guitar because I'd play for the kids and things like that. This was just like mild. It wasn't like it was in college where I was playing all the time. And, but I still had this like this whole pocket lint, you know, back pocket full of songs, you know, just in there. So I'd play for kids and uh, I, I decided, one of my friends decided to talk me into playing this Harry Buffaloes. I was like, well, this is a house band. They, they, so I walked up and I said, hey, when you guys are taking a break, do you mind if I play some songs? I went up there and I played some of my originals and there was a group of guys sitting at a round table up front and they just like moved their drinks aside. They're just like, Oh, you know, this one dude in particular, and I cannot remember his name, and I'm sorry, he's probably still out there, I hope he is. He, he said to me, he was like, listen, dude, I just got, went through this bad breakup. Your songs are totally speaking to me. Where are you from? Are you going to be here again? And I, I started coming back week, every Wednesday. So then you started having a consistent gig there mm -hmm. every uh, week. Just to interrupt the guys that already had the real gig. I wasn't making any money. I was oh. just playing for the fans. Oh. These guys wanted to hear my music, so I was just kind of like, hey, we'll do this. The, you know, and so my friends that I worked with were all about it. They're, they started coming every week, and even the girl that I was just talking about, she came because she knew I was actually gigging for once. She knew that's what I wanted to do. But it wasn't too long that I decided to move home. And that was about uh, actually June 17th, 2004. I know the exact day. Oh, wow. Because it's just one of those things that like s stuck out in my mind as a poignant thing. So you came back here. Mm -hmm. You were solo gigging? No. Or did no. you I moved back and I just started working. Off. I took time off naturally. I didn't know what I was doing. How I just, long? Um... It was less than a year before I met my new bass player at a, a mutual friend's wedding. He was a guy I used to play high school soccer with. His name was also Troy. I've had two Troys and two Steves in my band. I'm one of the Steves. But I mean, it's just one of those weird things that you just hold on to. And we were Forgotten Nobody back in college. And it was actually Troy Weatherly's, that's his last name, Troy's idea to name the band that. I had some other working ideas going on, like uh, drawing faces since I was an art major. But those were, you know, he's like, how about Forgotten Nobody? Because this is just one of those things that, like, sometimes you can really strike it off, but most bands just end up being a flash in the pan and they disappear. They're a Forgotten Nobody. But how ironic would it be if we could keep it going with this name? And I was like, I like it. Let's do it. So then I was at the flash, or, you know, flash forward to 2005-ish uh, summer. I, I met the other Troy, an old friend of mine from high school, played bass. I, I put my arm around him at the wedding. I said, how would you like to be in a band? He's like, you got a band. I was like, not yet, but we can make it. And We do now. <laughs> we, we do now because there's two. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we... We started practicing. He got his old drummer from uh, college, his fraternity brother, uh, Jeff Bucci. And uh, the three of us hit it hard, played at IUP uh, for like a, uh, like a battle of the bands. I met some girl at some bar who I was really attracted to, but she ended up just being a better lead than a girlfriend. <laughs> you know, she's like, hey, I'm with somebody, but you want to come play music? I was like, that's even better. <laughs> so it was kind of one of those things. And... Uh, we ended up playing, and we started hitting all the major scenes in Pittsburgh as Forgotten Nobody. We, we had an album out by 2006. I mean, we were talking Club Cafe, Hard Rock Cafe, all, wow. those, all those places. So it just blew up kind of overnight. Yeah, you and I, I've got to credit Troy for that. He was just a mastermind when it came to advertising 
our image and who we were. He was great with Photoshop, making posters and just getting the emails in. He was a an, an, uh, music administrator at Duquesne. Ah. So he not only had a few wins, but he, uh, I hope I got that right. I think that's what he was doing. But uh, he had ways to work the angles that I didn't know about yet. You mentioned that there was an album. Mm -hmm. With Forgotten Nobody. Yes. When did that come out? It was, uh, I'd like to say February 2006. How many songs? Uh, five songs. It was just an EP because we planned on making more. I had, I have so many songs that we were going to make a bunch of albums, and that's just kind of part of how we broke up in the same same way too. Is it out there in the social media bit? It is not. Oh. It is not because uh, just back then that was the MySpace days. I don't even think MySpace. I MySpace. I don't even what think. What a throwback. Yeah, you know what? Five thousand fans. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was just kind of one of those deals. Kids these days don't even know what MySpace right, is. Right, right. It was great, especially for music. I know. Especially for music. It was the best. But uh, that's, how, that's how we got on to, like, DVE. We played, we were featured on K-Rock whenever it was around. Okay, so you were on the radio with Forgotten yes. Nobody. Yes. What radio stations? Um, a lot of... You said DVE. DVE, we played live at their coffee shop once. Okay. One of, one of our favorite songs to play was a song called 19 to 26, and uh, it's actually a favorite fan favorite it wasn't in the plans to play it tonight but maybe i will just for the just for the heck of it yeah. you know just because Old i'm talking sake. about yeah. it now but uh we decided to play that one because we it would just happen to be a fun radio type song and we played how that. did that even happen how did you end up on all of these radio stations people just word MySpace. of mouth myspace myspace and word of mouth Man. i mean and, and like i said troy was a mastermind at like getting right. getting people to notice and it was just that good yeah. It, was, it was, and and I don't normally talk about myself. You know, people who know me don't. I'll promote myself, sure, but I'm not always like, hey. You know, I'm amazing. Yeah, yeah I don't no, like to be that way. I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be. I don't want to yeah. be remembered that way. Right. So, but it was just that good for that time period, and it was a little bit of punk rock, and it was. What happened? The band kind of dissolved. Well, we were in between uh, phases. I was getting tired of playing big venues with no fans. And so in my formula, in my head, we need to play all over the place. Vets clubs, we need to play house parties. And although that, that's, you know, that's beginner stuff. When we were hitting big venues, uh, they, the guys in the band were like, no, we need to keep playing. Let's do another album. This next album will really push it. I said, listen, it's no, there's no sense in doing another album if we don't have fans. Sure, we can be studio fans, but I want people there. I want people there. That's the energy. I'm a live performer, not a studio performer. Mm -hmm. And although we never had the conversation like that. That's a really good explanation, though, the difference between a live performer and a studio performer. I think people don't really understand that they are two different things. Right. Because a live performance is nothing like you'll ever see. I mess up a lot. And my friends know we that. We all do. Absolutely. We and make it up, though, on the fly. Absolutely. That's, that's what we do. Uh, my last show, I played at the venue in Manor f uh, for a bunch of kids. And my, my D string broke. And it was five songs in on a 12-song set. Oh. I turned around with my guitar, now all out of whack. And I think I looked at one kid in the face. And I was just like, we got to keep rolling. And he remembered that and posted that on his Instagram page. Steve Hawk, got to keep rolling. Or whatever it was. Yeah. It was along those lines. But that's the, that's the beauty of a live And show. you like that energy. You're someone that, that would prefer to go out there and do it live and roll with the punches than have it be perfect and pristine in the studio. Absolutely. Yeah. Although I do understand that you need a perfect and pristine recording. Right. But you also have to have the fan base to help you promote right. that stuff and to right. make sales and to really get your music out there. Right. So it kind of goes both ways. So there was a void there. Sure. And the guys, they lived together up in Cranberry and I lived all the way down here. Uh, I wasn't making a whole lot of money. They had nice jobs. So there was, there was an economic uh, sure. difference there too. I couldn't drive up where the studio was all the time in their basement. They could just come home from work and, and go downstairs and do whatever they wanted. It was a little bit of everything and we, we didn't, although we didn't uh, have any real harsh words towards each other, there was some harsh feeling and we just kind of disbanded, went on hiatus without really announcing anything to each other or ourselves. 
it was just one of those things that as mm -hmm. time moved on, it just kind of faded to the background. So as that faded away, did you take a break or did you jump right into doing solo work again? Here's where things get interesting. Uh, I did take a break and it wasn't, I had always planned on the band getting back together. And whenever, uh, whenever we didn't, I, you know, it was kind of like uh, when somebody in your life walks out and you hold onto their pant leg and they're dragging you through the mud yeah. as you're, as you're losing all your grace, you know, I wanted the band to get back together. And so it finally hit me that it wasn't, I was dating a girl up in Indiana and, uh, I was going through, uh, uh, one of my childhood friends was dealing with cancer. And I'm not talking just a childhood friend, I'm talking a guy I went swimming with when we were three years old, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And uh, I was with him in the hospital the night he was dying, or the night he was getting ready to have his initial surgery. I mean, all this stuff. So anyway, I'm going through that relationship with uh, her. Meanwhile, he's going through that. And meanwhile, in the background, I had a friend from Highway Louie, who you're going to have on the show next week. Yes. Almost wore, the, wore their shirt tonight because of that, but I figured I'd be plugging them anyway here. My buddy Eddie, he goes by Eddie Eisman on Facebook, so I'm, I don't know if he wants, to, wants me to say his real name or not. But anyway, Eddie would come back. He and I loaded trucks together when I had my band at UPS, and uh, I gave him an album. And so he always sat with this album, and he was like, man, I want to... I want to form a band too. And he and I fell apart. We kind of broke away from each other. But here it was, 2009, 2010. I was going, and this girl that I was dating went through a horrible breakup with her. And my friend was finally coming to the end of his fight with cancer. Eddie's reaching out to me. He's like, hey, you want to play music? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to play music, but I don't really have a good guitar right now. He's like, well, get your band together. You guys, we'd love to open up for you. I was like, Ed, I know, dude. And we broke up and I haven't really talked to these guys in a while. And I sat on that all winter. And around May, I'd like to say it was May, maybe earlier than that, he called me again. He's like, how would you like to, how would you like to play a house show? I was like, Ed, I told you, man. I, uh, it's been a year and a half since I've played. I don't even think people are going to like acoustic music. I was in a full band. I was used to being a front man. And I want, I want the pop. I want the energy that an acoustic can't bring. And I described all that to him. And he was just like, Oh you, my, he's just like, you got to, you you really, it's like foreshadowing. You're like, I was so wrong. You know what I thought back then, because you're killing it now. <laughs> and, and it's all mental. Yeah. It's, it's all because of what happened that day. He calls me up. Hey, I have this house party. My grandfather recently died. And that, of course that was heartbreaking. That was not like what was going on. My relationship with this girl, my friend dying of cancer, I'm thinking to myself, life is just too short. Do what you love, man. And that was one of the only times in my life where I really, it really spoke to me. So Ed, I hung up the phone after saying to Ed I wouldn't be there. So I went out to Guitar Center and bought the guitar that I play now with some inheritance money. Went straight to his house with a set list of, old song, of an old set list that forgotten nobody played. And I went to this basement and people had gathered around and when I was done they were just like, and then it began. That was the day. That's that was the day. Wow. Two, uh, it was 2009. I don't. 2010. I would have to say it was probably in the in the winter of 2010. My friend ended up passing away that summer, oh. which that's not. That gave you know gave a lot of uh, fire in here to keep going because right. he liked a couple of my songs too, and so every time I play some of the songs, actually one of the songs on my album is "Loner." I remember he called me up one time. He's like, "Hey, dude, this song right here. This he had a, a recording of what we were working on. Mm -hmm. It's like I love that song. So to this day, when I play "Loner" out or I hear it, I just think of my buddy, man, and and it's one of those things that you you got to keep living, you know. Yeah. And I'm glad that. I hate to say I'm glad that that happened, but it's it was the springboard that I needed. I started booking shows. I started meeting people. I started having that confidence again. And someone said it to me the other day. They said, you're not just an acoustic guy. You punch pe people in the face when you play. Yeah. And I was like, good, because that's what I that's was what afraid of 
whenever I was just starting out, that I was just going to be the guy in the corner. Hi, this is another song. Hope you guys enjoy it. You know, like one of those sort of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, enjoy your, your calamari. It's delicious here. You know, like one of those sort of things. But I didn't want to be that guy. I wanted to punch you in the face with music so that you remembered something. So let's fast forward to now. You are out solo gigging constantly. You did some pretty cool shows. You said this past March you opened for whom? Uh, John Karabi of uh, Motley Crue fame. And uh, it was one of those things where I had had a little hiatus, not like I was done playing. I was just taking a break. Since I work uh, uh, for a company that you know is it's UPS, I work for UPS, and in the, in the wintertime it's peak season. I just wasn't sure if I should mention that on, on live TV or not. I, I, don't know the, I don't know the way things work. But anyway, um, I was just taking a small break, uh, and I had a couple shows here. There, all last year, 2018, was just a show at like the Keynote Cafe here and there. And it was a show here, and, a show, and I probably played maybe five shows total that entire year. I got in touch, well actually Drusky Entertainment got in touch with me and they told me about this show. And so I thought to myself, okay, well, if I'm gonna open up for a national act, I need merch mm -hmm. of some sort. I need to start playing shows to get myself together again. And in the process of all of that, I, 2019 was probably one of the best years of my career that I've had as far as the music goes. I did open up for Karabi, not a single mistake. I, I nailed that show. A lot of people came up to me. A lot of bands were there to support me. Friends that I had met through mm -hmm. other places. Uh, I'm going to throw a name out. Rebel Revolver, you guys are awesome. I played one show with them at the keynote. And I mentioned how I was playing this show a couple weeks later. And all but one of the members of the band came. And they sold my merch all night long for me while I was just, yeah, it was really awesome. It's camaraderie. And that's what it's all about. And that's what I try to be for other people, too. You know, uh, I'm always wearing a band shirt. I'm always, especially on these sort of things, I'm always plugging things. And, and it's just because I want people to do that for me. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to do. You got to be united in this, in this place. Yeah. Nobody's better than anybody else. No, no, no. I forget your original question. We just kind of went off on oh, that. Oh, that's okay. I want to segue <laughs> off to, let's talk about you have a solo album out right now. Yes. Correct. Yes, it came how, out in 2015. How many songs? It's seven. I went with seven this so time. So, how can people find that music online? Give it's me on, all it's of on, your platforms. It's on digital platforms. Uh, I'm on CDBaby.com. I'm on Spotify. I'm on uh, Google Play. I'm on Amazon, iTunes. Uh, actually, just uh, for giggles, I uh, I. Googled it one night, and I'm actually on a Russian platform somewhere. Yes. It's collusion. Why no, not? seriously, I don't. I don't know what it is, but I found it. It was all Russian or Latvian or something. I was like, I don't know how to speak, but pick up my album. You know, so even in the in the in people far go, uh, far east. If people go to those platforms and they type in Steve Hawk, mm -hmm. which is spelled exactly as you think it is. Absolutely, there's no weird spellings in that. Everything will it's pop a bird. right up. <laughs> Hawk. Everything right. will pop up then. Mm -hmm. Steve Hawk. Uh, funny thing about that, and it's a funny story, and it's kind of ironic. A couple ironic things about my name is when I was in college and I was playing all those shows, people would ask me, are you related to Tony Hawk? Tony Hawk. Uh, yeah. Because, Were you going to go there? Well, no, but of course I thought it. Sure. And I said yes. Because he was, he was <laughs> big in the 90s, He was right? big in the so, 90s. I mean, and they had Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk Pro Skater coming out. Yeah. And my, uh, my answer to that was, yeah, you know, he's a distant cousin, but it's not like we get together for beers or anything. So, yeah, I, I lied. But it, it, my, <laughs> you never know. It my senior year, I came out and I told, the, I, I told everybody in the fraternity, I was like, all right, now that we're confessing to some things we've done over the past four years, I was like... I'm not. I'm actually. not related to Tony Hawk. Sorry. You know, it was one yeah. of those sort of things. Where like you, and then the the explicits come out, and and that's where it is, and and that was fun. Uh, also, I found out there's another Steve Hawk that is electronic music because as soon as I put my music on there to Spotify and Google Play, this dude already had like uh, six years of one single gathering oh. fans, and he's now on the. He's Steve Hawk also on my on my page so it's like i'm like dude i'm not electronic but hey check him out too yeah. hopefully he's saying the same thing about me you know really quickly because i actually didn't touch on this we've been talking so much but i love it um 
what genre do you play? I mean, how would you describe your sound? It's, I, I, it's hard to describe your own genre. I've always just yeah. allowed other people to uh, tell me what they think it is because I have so many different songs, slow songs, fast songs, bar chord strumming, punk style, uh, slow single, uh, first fret uh, folk type songs that I, I've always said that I'm stricken with the blues with a hangover of old rock and roll. That's yeah. kind of in my, you know, stricken with punk, laced with the blues, and a hangover of old rock and roll. That's the only way I can really describe myself. I, I really enjoy that description. So. Yeah, it was something that I came up with when I was trying to promote myself way back when. <laughs> I like it, I like it. So, let's talk about future projects. Do you have anything in the works for 2020? <laughs> You know what, that's the thing. Um, I am going to record again. I'm actually going to release a couple uh, new songs. I have, uh, this year, one of the cool things that I did this year was worked with a whole, uh, with Westmoreland County bands. We did a 724 compilation album. It's on the shirt. And we released it back in August. We did a uh, release party at the venue in Manor. Mm -hmm. uh, all the bands, but one or two maybe, came and played. Uh, we released the album. It's online through Mulberry Street Records. You can www.mulberrystreetrecords.com, just how that sounds. You can pick up your own copy. And um, that was just one of the projects. The song that I released on there was a song that I did off of my very first album back in 2000 called Midnight Misery. Back then it was called Release because, you know, I was trying to be artsy and creative. And I found out that Mysterious. it was just better to, yeah, <laughs> just better to just, hey, this is in the, this is in the, the hook. Let's yeah. just call it this. So I redid this song, recorded it in my basement with uh, the artist So Death Cannot Find Me. He's not on the song, but he had the equipment. Mm -hmm. Took it down to my basement while I was on vacation back in March, I believe, and uh, we recorded this song. We recorded two songs, and that's the one that uh, my buddy Mike wanted to keep for the album. He was the, the front runner for this compilation. Uh, other projects I have in mind, I'm going to release that as a single probably here uh, very shortly. I'm also planning on releasing uh, the Forgotten Nobody album on all platforms. Just to, I wanted to do it uh, on an anniversary year, but I thought better late than never. Uh, so I'm going to release that. It's called Missing Screws. That's what the album's called. I'm going to try and get all the artwork together that we had originally. Five songs so that people can enjoy that again. And then I do plan on recording. I have so much music that I play live that people just want and I'm still writing and people are just like, I like that one on my page. I like that one. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll sing it again, you know? Do you have these songs up on a Facebook page or a, web or a website somewhere? <clears throat> a lot of times right now while I know, because I know that I thirst for music, mm -hmm. and so I'm hoping that my fans do too. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I'm hoping that people are thirsting for it as well. I just post videos of new songs that I'm working on just to kind of tithe people over until something happens. Do you typically post those on Facebook? I post it on my own personal page. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I have a personal Facebook page and I have my music page. Mm -hmm. You can find my music page by going to www.facebook, I think it's backslash whatever, Steve Hawk Music. No spaces, all caps. Uh, the, the first letter, the S, the H, and the M are all caps. Hopefully that's not confusing for people. Steve Hawk Music. Um, I'm also on ReverbNation.com. You just go to the Reverb Nation page, and a lot of my old stuff is on there. That's the that's the kind of fun stuff. When I was just first starting out, a couple live performances, a couple interviews from 2010, 2011. I don't really go to Reverb Nation too often. I've been getting hits from WCLG down in Morgantown. A lot of bands in the area, and they, they've been playing us every Sunday night. And they go to my Reverb Nation page to pluck my music off there for their radio, oh, for, nice. their, uh, for their show, uh, WCLG Homegrown Plug. And so, uh, you know, every Sunday night, they, they do it based on fan participation. They post something on Monday, mm -hmm. and then based on who throws out a uh, you know a tag for their favorite band or artist yeah. it gets played the following sunday wow, night that's it's, really pre cool. it's pretty yeah, cool that's really cool yeah. so for everyone out there watching if you go to those two or three social media platforms you can hear new material old material and get a feel for what he does at, while we wait for a new album or ep Absolutely. to drop in 2020 and i wanted to 
not to interrupt you, Chelsea, no. but the my album is exactly like my live show. A lot of people it went back with that mentality of going back to 2010 where, oh, I need a full band. Now I realized I didn't. I'm playing live shows by myself. So I did a whole album with Daniel Blake. It was The Schoolhouse. Uh, I think he goes by Daniel Blake Productions now. I could be wrong. Sorry, buddy, if I got that wrong. But uh, he recorded my album. Actually, he did it for free. He did it for free because I think I was the first guy he ever worked with. And I uh, went to his schoolhouse, recorded in his room because it was wintertime and he didn't have the schoolhouse ready. So songs like Just In Case, I Want More uh, off of that album. I think Glutton For Punishment, there were three or four songs that were recorded up in his room and we had crickets. Oh, uh, As I Get Older, that's one that you can hear the crickets as the music fades out and we're just like, let's keep it. This is it. We're, I was by a window, you know. It was it was very rustic. The 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 whole thing it was very the beginning, and I didn't care. I've been here before with beginnings. Let's have another good beginning. And and Dan was a good ally to have on my side. And he's recorded with countless artists in the area now. He actually um, that uh, I pointed over there because that's where the compilation album is. But uh, he actually mastered the comp album for uh, the Westmoreland County uh, project. So. Uh, yeah, he, he. I lost myself again, just rambling all over again. This is just so much fun. I know. We, we could literally. <laughs> well, do I want to take hours. this microphone everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think that pretty much wraps it up for Excellent. us for right now. Unless there's anything else that you would like to add. Uh, no. Um, I'm actually on a long. Uh, stint of shows right now things are going to pop up just follow my uh, facebook page follow reverb nation follow me i have mild twitter uh, i don't really get into twitter all that much but i mainly post pictures of shows i'm very active with the fans as you can see in my my photos i always i always make sure to include them because i'm not anything without guys like you Steve, thank, thank you, you so thank very you, much Chelsea. for coming on tonight. It's fun. I it's been a pleasure again. to talk to you. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to hearing your music. So for everyone out there, sit tight. We will be right back with how many songs are you playing today? I'm going to do seven songs. Seven original songs We'll tonight. see how that goes, though. We'll see you after the break. Stream live and recorded content anywhere with EXP from Armstrong. Stay connected to the content you love. With the all-new EXP app, you can browse and manage your shows and set recordings for TV shows, movies, and series. Plus, you can stream your favorite networks directly from your DVR or with TV Everywhere. At home, the app also lets you transform your device into a second TV screen or remote control. Your content, your way, when you want it. EXP from Armstrong. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's time for the music. This is singer-songwriter Steve Hawk. Let's rock and roll. Brings bad mental health Let me talk about my year Gave my 99 but she's still not here Came to the conclusion what you said was true It's been a long, long time since I've heard from you Hit me underneath the gas station light A tear so glad the jacket on a Friday When things go wrong, I can take his place I've cooked a bitter taste Served with regret on a dirty plate I'm now the just in case But just in case you care, I've gone away
talk about my luck She said you're nice enough, baby, you're my runner-up I guess the same old story stands But I know money and power don't make no man Though what you said was true That your selfish ways They got the best of you While your romance is you In the dead of night I'll be playing for the people Under these stage lights I'm now the just in case When things go wrong I can take his place My cup's a bitter taste Served with regret On your dirty plate I'm now the just in case But just in case you can I've gone away I've gone away I wish you could feel How I feel But you'll never feel How I feel Should I listen when you say to run away But unlike you I couldn't do a heart that way Yeah I'm now the just in case When things go wrong I can take this place I'm good to bitter taste Served with regret on a dirty place I'm now the just in case But just in case you care song that I just recently posted to my Facebook page. It is an old song, but it is new to your ears. This is a song called All of the Freaks. Fun thing about this song was uh, we were out to a couple my buddies. We were out and about on, on the night of the town, and uh, the street lights went out right as we were going underneath. And she looks at me. She's like, does this always happen to you? I was like, no, but it's going to make a great lyric to a song. This is called All of the Freaks. Tonight. 
All the good people pray in their beds While I stare at the dark sky to fix my head All the street lights go out when I go under Is there something in my soul that turns them black? the wings of all the wounded doves today but if the tables are turned they leave me where I lay all the freaks come out at night looking for something to save their precious lives all of you lonely who just want to make things right All the freaks All the freaks Come out at night Looking for something to save their precious lives All of you lonely who just want to make things right I say you're in good company tonight I'm in good company tonight this here capo there we go got away from me but anyway that's how a live show goes we were just talking about that i don't get too political but these are political times aren't they all and no matter what side you're on you always think you're right and you always think that someone else is wrong and honestly, I'm right smack dab in the middle, staring at you both, thinking you're both right and wrong and a little bit of idiotic in between. This is a song called Dotted Line. claims to have good intentions how long do intentions last and so few are fighting the good fight while the rest of the world's going mad some even say that the end's drawing near but the world has always been bad everybody's on their own to live how they want to live and everybody has that choice to give where they want to give with or without you with or without you your air's hot with opinion and you wonder why I won't make a choice maybe more people should sit and listen than ruin my air with their voice your side standing for something the others it don't make sense so why would i draw a line in the sand when i could see the whole beach from this fence everybody's on their own to live how they want to live and everybody has that choice to give where they want to give the consequences are your own when you cross that dotted line giving you your choice and I have mine
want to give I'm just trying to get there I'm just trying to see why we all wander away To give where they want to give The consequences are your own When you cross that dotted line I'm giving you your choice And I have mine I'm giving you your life And I have mine In every direction Lies a dotted line Would you cross this could you cross this time? I decided to pull together an eclectic set list tonight. And I, we were talking about my band Forgotten Nobody on the sh earlier in the show, so I decided to do the very first song that got us on the radio. This is a song called Pleasure Possession. Let me just make sure things are sounding right to the ears. She's steady, got the lipstick ready with a dress that she bought for a special day. She dances in raindrops and says he's way too pessimistic. Her mind goes a mile a minute when she thinks of the things that she could have been. Throws it all out the window because she feels the love's too boring. She was an innocent girl. Is in a mason jar Make a single story Forever relove her she Lost taste of what a romance is And now she's getting pessimistic Lovers trade glances She likes to think that they give a fight for her But it's just an illusion Because love They talk behind her She wants an innocent world Wants to be Day. When her hair was one color before Life got a realistic All the flowers in that mason jar Got placed away for another day She didn't use up her chances But she'll never get to push rewind She wants an innocent world Wants to be that faster a pleasure possession and she's love for all the wrong reasons she can't even keep her story straight and it all began on that special day she's a pleasure possession and she's love for all the wrong reasons the wrong reason she's special god she's special Thank you. That was the first song that got me on the radio, and this is my latest song. Because sometimes the feelings just don't go away for the people that you cared about at one time. And I sat down and thought about it, thought about one person for far too long.
and decided I couldn't sit and think and dwell anymore. So I decided to pen out this song. This is a song called Where My Heart Has Roamed. Now I won't regret where my heart has roamed And I no longer dwell in the pain I just want someone To pull me out of the rain Sunset made the world and pink on this day. It took my mind somewhere lost that faded away. Said goodbye to the summer and all those passionate sighs. Clear sunset, painted violet in her blue eyes when I said goodbye. Took years to forget It raised many questions I wrote a novel of regret Along came some changes And I passed good chances aside Where my brain can falter My heart never lies So I won't regret where my heart has I just want someone to pull me out of the rain. And I held, but the apparition slipped my grasp. Just like the sunny rays get stolen by the night, I must let go before it ruins my life. I must let go before it ruins my life. Sunset, world on that day. Life hung my heart out to dry, and then it rips me away. Said goodbye to the summer and all those passionate sighs. That nuclear sunset painted violet on unfaithful eyes. So I won't regret where my heart has. Roamed and I no longer dwell in the vein. I just want someone to pull me out of the rain. I won't regret where my heart has roamed and I no longer dwell in the pain. I just want someone to pull me out of the rain. Thank you, thank you. I've got a couple left here. I talked about the compilation album earlier, so I decided to play this song along with this interview. Thanks again to Music Talks Armstrong Cable for having me here tonight, Chelsea. You've been wonderful. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. I am Steve Hawk. Check out all my social media. This is a song called, and you can find it on the 724 compilation album. You can. It's a song called Midnight Misery. No. 
pick up pieces I'm not here to kiss your precious child goodnight Always searching for something I don't need But now I know I'm wrong I'm not here to waste tomorrow On what I tried to do today I just want to live tomorrow on my own Now I won't lay down No Take me to my midnight misery I need some time to get me off of my cloud I'm listening to a lonely memory But now I'm way too loud Sometimes late at night I'm lonely and Other nights I fill my bed There are times when you could see the blame in me But you'll never, ever get inside my head
thank you. I have one left. Thanks for everybody who sat in the lobby and listened in tonight. This was a lot of fun. Thank you to Chelsea Rittenauer, Armstrong Cable, Cobblestone now, what is it? Comfort Inn, Sweets Hotel. You can find this on my album, The Demons in My Heart's Home, on Spotify, on Google Play, on all of your favorite platforms, and apparently even in Russia. This is not about a girl. When friends go bad. Do wicked things to me. Then tell me that you love me. Do anything to me. I know that you can. I'm a glutton for punishment. Sucker when you banish me. And now you're gone. Take what you can. They use me, even though they're underfoot. They break me. Well, I guess I'm too good. That's why I must explain why I'm sure to resent. I'm just a button for punishment. Yeah, punish me with the lies. Make me break all my ties. But I love you anyway. Punish me with lies, punish me with your lies, yeah. Talk about me behind the walls I see you laughing When I take my fall Now I must explain That I'm not finished yet I'm just a glutton for punishment Yeah, punish me with lies Make me break all my ties But I love you anyway Punish me with lies Punish me with your lies Yeah Do wicked things to me Tell me that you love me Do anything to me Because I know that you can I'm a glutton for punishment Sucker when you banish me And now you're gone Take what you can Take what you can Take what you can Take what you can Thank you all very much. Have a good evening. Steve, thank you so very much thank for coming you. out tonight. A lot of fun. You are fantastic. Every, everyone, Bloody. that's okay. You just sang a half hour show. For everybody out there, you just heard seven original songs from singer songwriter Mr. Steve Hawk. I was really feeling it, man. Cool. I really was. Cool. I cannot wait for the album to drop in 2020. Get it out there soon, because yeah, right. I, I I would yeah, love I'm to have the, I would love to have a we'll CD. Yes, please, please. If you, well, that's out now. Demons in my heart's out. You can grab that. There you go. Demons in my heart is out. You didn't play that tonight. I, I oh, that's not an actual song. That's a title for, or that's a line from one of the songs. Ah. ah. But uh, Glutton, wow. just in case, and, and Glutton, just in case were the first song I played. They were both from that album. You can check those All out. right, so. Those two songs, you can check them out on social media. Be sure to add him on Facebook so you can see where he's performing and all of his new music. Thank you very much again for coming out tonight. That is a wrap for us this evening, but next week we will be back at Bar None with our friends from Highway Louie. So we'll see you then. Have a great night, everyone. Bye. Bye.